Welcome back to Engineering Acoustics. Hi, this is Professor Ryan Harm. In this video, we'll learn all about the basics of wave propagation. So let's get started. Our first aim is to distinguish vibrations and waves. So vibrations involve the oscillations of masses, and in this case, the energy is confined to the motion of that mass or particle. But for waves, the oscillation is collective and involves many adjacent particles. Here, the energy goes beyond each individual particle oscillation. So the particles themselves oscillate locally, but the wave is a collective structure that's created due to this adjacent particle interaction. That's the, fact, that's the distinguishing factor of waves. They propagate energy beyond given particles. And these waves that we'll study in this course often result due to vibrating surfaces. It could be, for instance, sound propagating into the windows of a kitchen or through the walls or in the windshield glass or through the windshield glass of vehicles or out HVAC ducts or the human vocal cords. This, uh, this type of sound resulting from vibrating surfaces constitutes a significant proportion of sounds we are encounter day in, day out. But there are many other sounds that uh, could be the result of aeroacoustic or thermoacoustic sources that are also relevant in engineering applications, such as sound due to turbulent airflow or noise from explosions and crackling flames. We won't focus on these sources of sound in this course, and instead we'll give attention to vibrating surfaces that produce sound. What are some of the characteristics of these acoustic waves caused by vibrating surfaces? Well, they travel with wave fronts located, identified as locations of constant phase. So here, this is a schematic of a spherical wave front. It reduces in amplitude uh, as distance increases from the source. For single frequency wave fronts, we identify a wavelength, which is the distance in, of points between points of constant phase of the wave. For non-single frequency waves, we also see that the amplitude of the wave decreases as distance increases from the source. And we can likewise identify points of constant phase to track as time um, goes on. These wave fronts have some other characteristics as well. They interfere. Waves arriving at common points from different origins will combine, and this combination is called interference when the waves occur at the same frequency. Constructive interference is when the peaks add up. We see constructive interference in the video at the center of the wave um, combination. So in a vertical line, straight through this video, we see constructive interference. On the other hand, destructive interference is when the peaks cancel out. We see destructive interference off this vertical line, off axis. For instance, we'll sketch it here in a moment. Destructive interference is occurring in a line like this, where the red and blue interact. The interference occurs according to the distance between the sources and the wavelength of the sound itself. Refle reflection occurs when waves arrive at interfaces. And in this case, part of the wave is reflected and part of the wave is transmitted. The relative amplitude of reflected and transmitted waves depends on the differences between the fluids at the interface. In this video, the wave arrives at a rigid boundary and reflects in phase. It's this impedance difference between the fluid and the boundary that governs the phase of the reflected wave. Waves also scatter. Scattering occurs when a wave is incident on a complex geometry object. And the scattered field is a combination of incident and the reflected waves all at once. What scattering looks like is due to the relative size difference between the objects and the wavelength. In the video on the left, the wavelength is large with respect to the scatterer shapes or the collective scatterer geometry. And in that case, the reflected wave is quite organized, something like a spherical wave itself. So the reflections add up and look like a spherical wave coming off the scatterer. This is very different than the scatterer on the right, because the wave that's incident is of small wavelength with respect to the size of the scatterers. In this case, as the wave arrives at the scatterers, the summation of the reflected waves is very disorganized at the video on the right. So this is scattering. It's a combination of incident and reflected waves 
with organization dependent upon the difference in wavelengths and dimensions. Waves refract. Waves that arrive at a discontinuity from one fluid to another will bend, and this bending determined is determined by the obliqueness of the angle and the difference between the fluids. So in this video here, we have air, a wave arriving from air that reflects off an air-water boundary, but bends as it comes off. The reflected wave departs at an angle equal to the incident angle, whereas the bent angle in water is a much steeper angle. And we see this video again. This is refraction. It's bending of the waves when waves ar arrive at a fluid interface. Diffraction is another important wave propagation phenomenon. Diffraction is a bending of the wave that's determined by the difference between the wavelength size and the dimension of the wall or barrier. On the left, the wavelength is short compared to the size of the barrier, and there's lots of blocking and bending of the wave. On the right, though, the barrier is small compared to the wavelength, so the wave passes by almost undisturbed and recoalesces on the right side of the barrier. This same phenomenon occurs with waves at apertures, which are effectively holes or openings in rigid walls. The same type of wavelength and dimension relationship occurs that governs diffraction through apertures. The Doppler effect is what we have in acoustics with a moving source of sound. When the source is unmoving, we hear a constant frequency. But if the source moves towards us or away from us, we either hear an increased or decreased frequency as we see here in the video. As the source is moving towards us, the frequency increases and decreases as the source moves away. In an extreme case, when the source of sound moves faster than the speed of sound, which is Mach 1, a sonic boom occurs. And we see this here through this great animation that shows that the boom is the result of all of the wave fronts arriving at the same time at our ears. This is, of course, what's visualized by the cones around aircraft uh, when they arrive at the sonic barrier. A final important characteristic of sound is what's called reciprocity. This helps us understand the dis difference between sources and receivers of sound. Acoustic reciprocity states that interchanging positions of a source and receiver results in the same received signal. What this means, of course, is that if we have a speaker generating sound and a microphone receiving it, if we just change the positions of microphone and speaker, we'll measure the same sound with the microphone. This also occurs if there is a barrier in between us or something in between us. If we change the positions, the same microphone signal will occur. And even uniquely, this also occurs if we're no longer in open space, but use a, a path like a duct. If we propagate sound through this pipe or duct, the microphone will hear the same thing regardless of which direction we send the signal. This is reciprocity and it's very central to a lot of our decision-making and noise control practice. So let's summarize what we have learned. In this video, we've learned that energy is transferred by the collective oscillation of fluid particles, and this is the definition of a wave. Waves interfere, reflect, scatter, refract, diffract, all based on the path of propagation and what are the characteristics of the fluid media along the way. And many of these wave behaviors in acoustics are identical to those in optics, and you may have recognized that through the examples in this video. Wave sources that travel change the effect of wave speed, and this is called acoustic Doppler effect. And then finally, acoustic reciprocity is the fact that we can replace the source and receiver locations and still have the same received acoustic signal. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll learn about a key motivation for many engineering acoustics applications. We'll learn about how humans hear.